It's great to be in the SEC. Welcome back to another episode of the SEC Recap Podcast. I am your host, Ben Warren. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at SEC Recap. Um, you can follow me on other socials as well. YouTube, Twitter, those are the main ones. You'll always catch me on there. Talking a little trash week to week. Um, and don't forget, you can donate to the pod. Toss me a couple bucks, uh, a cup of coffee, or giant bottle of water if you like the content and what I'm doing. Um, man, as soon as it got here, guys, the season is now officially well past halfway. We are headed into week eight. So we're going to do a little recap of the week seven action. There was no pod last week. Again, it's tough. I'm full-time work, full-time school, um, plus part-time a ton of other things. So um, one episode a week, sometimes it is just tough for me to carve out the time to do it, but I'm back this week and we're going to keep it short and sweet as possible. Recapping those week seven picks that I am not all too proud of. Um, if you're listening in audio form, uh, what you're not getting is my visuals here. So head on over to YouTube where you can follow, uh, subscribe, smash the thumbs up while you're there. But you can follow out or follow along with these picks, um, of power rankings, and the week eight previews as we get to them. So I went one for six. Um, the only game that I picked correctly uh, with the win and against the spread was Auburn LSU. So let's go back and just do a quick recapitulation of where I went wrong. So number one, Georgia was a 31 and a half point favorite over Vanderbilt Commodores. That was a road game. Nashville, great town to play in. Um, not a great stadium to play in. Um, but really thought Georgia would just do whatever they wanted. Ah, for the most part, they did. I mean, they put up 37 points, but it was Vanderbilt. And all the talk headed into this game was Vandy has not scored an offensive touchdown against Georgia in like five years or 15 years or 50 years or whatever the stat was. It was totally believable. Vandy puts up 20 on Georgia. And the story of this game was Brock Bowers going down uh, at some point in the second quarter. Uh, with a high ankle sprain or break or something I can't quite remember, but having that tightrope surgery, he, no official word yet, no, they're saying, well, he could miss four weeks or six weeks. Um, who knows? It's really going to be up to him if he wants to come back, you know. Um, he's got two natties under his belt. Um, he could still be a part of a team. That goes on to 3P, and I think Georgia will be fine without him. Will they miss him? Yes, of course they will. But uh, do they need him to succeed? I don't know that I would say that. So it's up to him, but he could be back uh, maybe in November for that Tennessee game, maybe SEC championship game. We'll kind of wait wait and see on that one. But Carson Beck throws 261, a touchdown, and an INT. Ken Seals for Vandy throws two touchdowns and an INT. Vandy got nothing to go in on the ground, just 18 rushing yards, while Georgia rushed for 291 and, of course, threw for 261. All of Vandy's production came through the air for 201 yards. So and when you're that one-dimensional, you're not going to really be in the game. But they were able to to find success on Georgia. So that one kind of busted my pick wide open. No use kind of dwelling on that there. You get it wrong, you move on. We had Arkansas at number 11, Alabama. Alabama, 19 and a half point favorite. And they done messed around and let Arkansas get back into the game. Um, Alabama had a pretty comfy lead, like 21 to 6, and they just kind of gave up some plays, let Arkansas sneak in in the third and fourth quarter with a little 15-point comeback attempt, but Alabama successfully puts them away in the fourth, 24-21, did not get the cover. Kind of a sloppy ending there when you're a multiple-score favorite. Then what I think was, well, Possibly the game of the week, one of, if not the game of the week, uh, Texas A&M going on the road to number 19, Tennessee, Texas and Texas A&M. Um, I mean, this one was weird. So 
Texas A&M had not run won a true road game in like you know two years. Tennessee, twelve straight home wins at Neyland Stadium, but Texas A&M, top to bottom, talent on that roster. I mean, I, Alabama, Georgia, those are the only two rosters you can really point to top to bottom that have more talent. So Texas A&M has paid a premium for that talent. It has just not come to fruition. Now, this was an ugly game. It was a rock fight. Um, Tennessee won this one 20 to 13. Not a lot of offensive points in this game. There's a lot of moving the ball, just not a lot of converting those yards into points. Um, but I thought this would be a real test for Tennessee, even though, you know, it's a home game for the Vols, uh, and I love my Vols. Um, I really thought this is a game that Texas A&M might come in and just play hard with a chip on their shoulder. I did not think Tennessee would be successful running the ball like they did. Uh, Jalen Wright had 19 carries for 136 yards. Most people did not see that coming. On the flip side of that, Joe Milton throws for just barely, I think he barely scrapes together 100 yards. The downfield attack was still not there for the Vols, which they have struggled with all season. But that Vols pass rush was just super lethal. Uh, they were after Max Johnson all game. He was constantly under pressure, still made some straight up matrix style throws, um, you know, under pressure and was able to move the ball, but again, just couldn't come up with points. Whereas I think Tennessee, man, down in the red zone multiple times where they just either opt to not kick a field goal. Um, Joe Milton throws a pick, you know, right down there in the red zone. It just, they left a lot of points on the field, and while they got the win this week, it's not going to work out for them this week in Tuscaloosa if they play like that. More on that in the last segment, though. Uh, simultaneously, we had Florida at South Carolina. Now, I thought coming out of the bye week, this would be the game that South Carolina got right. They had that loss to Tennessee, um, you know, three-score loss. Then they got the bye week. Then they got Florida at home. They ended up, I think, a two-point favorite. Florida really kind of struggling on the road. Um, still a lot of question marks. A lot of question marks for both teams, actually. And South Carolina all but had this game put away. And they let Florida convert just... some crazy opportunistic fourth downs in the fourth quarter to just flush away a 10-point lead and give Florida the win 41-39. to Now, two weeks ago on the pod, uh, heading into that South Carolina-Tennessee game, I said that game was super critical because whichever team lost that game would most likely be spiraling for the season. And I kind of laid out the path based on ESPN's analytics. Uh, that preseason, you know, uh, game predictor, how many games each of those teams was going to win. I said, if Tennessee loses that, they're, that really kind of squarely puts them in that seven-win ceiling category because you lose a lot of momentum, but you're also probably cementing the fact that you can't compete against probably the better teams in the conference, which are still left on your schedule. Now, South Carolina has already made it past Georgia, top team in the conference, uh, certainly the East, probably the conference. But South Carolina lost that game. And so I laid out that if South Carolina loses, according to ESPN, that puts them at that five, six win ceiling. And that was still banking on the fact that they beat Florida coming out of the bye. Now that they have lost to Florida, they're sitting at two and four overall, one and three in the SEC. They still have Kentucky. They still have Missouri. They still have Vanderbilt. Man. Jacksonville State, which Jacksonville State, I don't know that that's going to be a pushover game anymore. They still have to go on the road to Texas A&M. Uh, that spiral prediction looks like it could 100% play out here for the Gamecocks at this juncture where let's say, let's even call straight up Jacksonville state's a win Vanderbilt's a win. Where's your other win on the road at AM, 
on the road at Missouri. You get Kentucky at home. You got to play Clemson. I think that's a home game. Do you win one of those? I mean, even winning one of those, that still only gets you to five wins. There's a real possibility the Gamecocks end up four and eight this year. Five and seven, I think, optimistically. If you get to a bowl game, that's a miracle salvage of the season. Um, So that's where they are. Let's not dwell on it. We'll get to more on that in the week eight preview. Uh, Then we had Mizzou at Kentucky. I thought being a home game, Kentucky would bounce back. Um, after that Georgia loss, two and a half point favorite, Mizzou got them 38, 21, although 18 of those points came in the fourth quarter, uh, really a much closer game throughout the, throughout the game, uh, than that final score makes it appear. Brady cook threw okay. 175 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Ray Davis, 20 carries for 128 yards. He's doing exactly what Kentucky wants him to do. Just wasn't quite enough. Um, You know, I don't even think Missouri ran the ball that well, but they were just kind of able to pour it on there at the end. Kentucky not able to keep up. Devin Leary, largely a disappointment. Uh, Definitely not what Kentucky fans were hoping for this season. Not sure where Kentucky's going to end up. They're still sitting at 2-2 and in the SEC, 5-2 and overall, but they've still got to play Tennessee, Alabama, uh, go on the road to South Carolina. That game might be kind of a coin flip, really, so... Um, a lot of question marks for the Wildcats. Final game, we had Auburn LSU. And LSU was an 11-point favorite. That was a comfortable pick for me. Uh, they covered that, took the game 48-18. Auburn just really struggling to find offense. Um, LSU... I mean, I guess maybe you could say they're playing better defensively, but against Auburn, it's tough to judge because I just Payton Thorne, Robbie Ashford, they're just having trouble moving the ball down there, converting into points in the red zone. Jaden Daniels, however, as good as it gets, 325, three touchdowns, an interception. I think he'd be a top choice for the Heisman. Uh, he still could be, just depending on how the season shakes out for LSU. If they win one more game, or sorry, lose one more game, he's probably out of that convo. But as it stands, if they went out, win the West, and compete for that SEC uh, championship, I think you got to consider him a certainly uh, in the conversation for the Heisman. All right, that's week seven picks. Let's take a peek at power rankings, but real quick. Uh, before we get into that, just want to point you towards some really awesome merch that I've got up for sale on my store, SEC Recap, sorry, bonfire.com slash store slash SEC Recap. One more time, that's bonfire.com slash store slash SEC Recap. Got what I call my SEC Pride merch right here on screen. I'm featuring my LSU hoodies, but I've got this for every team, guys. You got the school name, the outline of the state, and uh, like the mascot or logo in the geographic location of the area. So nice purple hoodie with the with the yellow or gold lettering here and that eye of the tiger in the location of Baton Rouge. It looks great. And I've never done this before, but I'm just going to tab over and kind of show some of this stuff off real quick. Um, as you can see, uh, I've got every style available in t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, hoodie, um, sweatshirt, variety of colors, guys, different colors in the different styles. Um, right here, you see Vanderbilt, Texas A&M. I love the way the A&M and the Tennessee looks. I love the South Carolina style. Um, the garnet on black Mizzou, uh, you know, that black on gold, uh, LSU, that gold on purple, the Kentucky, uh, the Wildcat logo on that Royal blue really pops. Um, man, it, it all looks really, really great. And all of those purchases just kind of help me out, kind of pay for, you know, hosting costs and that kind of thing, just to keep the podcast running. There are no ad reads, no sponsorships currently, uh, on the podcast. So head on over, find a style, find a shirt, find a team, find a logo you like, buy them for yourself, especially now that that weather's cooling down. It's bonfire season um, in that fall weather. So get you one of those slick team hoodies from bonfire.com slash store slash SEC recap. All right, 
heading back over to the power rankings. Let me close off my uh, my ads here. All right. Um, completing week seven, heading into week eight. Now, there wasn't a lot of shakeup here. And again, there's going to be a lot of arguments for how this could go a lot of different directions. And I understand that. I'm open. Um, I do take head-to-head -head into account, but this also accounts for week-to-week -week how each team is currently playing, how they would fare on a neutral site. At the top, Georgia, they're undefeated. Nothing's changed. I'm not going to spend any more time justifying why Georgia is still number one overall. Number two, I got Alabama. Number three, Tennessee. Now, we'll see what happens this weekend. The Vols travel to Tuscaloosa to play the Crimson Tide. Both teams kind of leaning on their defense this year as opposed to the offensive shootout we saw last year. More on that in the next segment. But right now, that's the way I see it shaking out. Number four, I got Ole Miss. Number five, LSU. So I understand arguments that you could put Ole Miss at three. They beat LSU. I understand you could make an argument as good as Jaden Daniels is playing, as good as LSU is. They're outscoring everybody. Uh, they still lost two games. Um, they lost to Ole Miss. Uh, they still have to play Alabama. They don't play Tennessee or Georgia. Well, at least not potentially until an SEC championship game. But, um, you know, I, I can't justify putting LSU ahead of Ole Miss, certainly not ahead of Tennessee right now, I, although I, I get the arguments for shaking that up. I know a lot of people would love to see Mizzou higher. They're playing really well, but statistically, I, and I talked about this last time, and I, I've tweeted about this too, um, Mizzou is 6-1, and one, okay? Um, but it's not the most outright impressive six and one. Their best win was a miracle home win against then number 15, Kansas State. Kansas State is no longer ranked. Uh, so, yes, it was a top 25 win. Credit to them for getting that. But it took a miracle 60 some odd yard kick at the end to kind of win, you know, by by three points. They scraped by Memphis. They scraped by Middle Tennessee State. Uh, it's just so again. Are they playing well? Yes. If they continue to play well, they'll move up the power rankings. Until then, they need to beat an LSU, whom they lost to. They need to beat Tennessee. They need to beat Georgia, okay? So I think there's still something to prove there for the Tigers. And then at number seven, Texas A&M. I got no problem with this. I think they're super talented. It's a really good uh, defensive front, The good in the secondary. I think there's offensive weapons. No, Max Johnson is not Connor Wegman, but... I think they're still going to give some teams problems. Um, I think they're going to handle South Carolina. I think they're going to handle, you know, uh, they've handled all the teams behind them, uh, certainly. So I got no problem keeping A&M at seven right there, middle of the road. Um, number eight, Florida. They're playing better, certainly. They got the road win, come from behind win over South Carolina. So credit to them. They're kind of shaking off some of those road woes. Still think six and six, seven and five is kind of the ceiling for Florida. No Gators fans will love to argue with me about that. That's totally fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, but they still got to play LSU. They still got to play Georgia. So, um, you know, it, it's not an easy. It's definitely not a gimme in the back half for the Florida Gators. Uh, number nine, Kentucky. I think overall they're just kind of underperforming. And middle of the SEC is right about where Mark Stoops has been for the 11 years he's been there. Uh, if, if you're a Kentucky fan and you love mediocrity, you love where you're at right now. Number 10, Arkansas. Whew, it has been rough for Arkansas. They do get Mississippi State this week at home. A really starved Arkansas Razorbacks team and fan base. I think they'll look to bounce back, but it has been a brutal five-game stretch for the Hogs. Number 11, Auburn. Number 12, South Carolina. Number 13, Mississippi State. Number 14, Vanderbilt. Um, I mean, if you just look at the SEC standings, it's pretty easy to see how that shakes out. Auburn's 0-3 in conference. Mississippi State is... 0-3 in conference, and I know Arkansas is 0-4 in conference. Um, but I still think they're probably a little better than Auburn. I don't know. That's just, that's just 
that's my opinion. I, I think if it came down to scoring points, Arkansas would have an advantage over Auburn, over South Carolina. Certainly Mississippi State, as I think we'll see this weekend, and Vanderbilt 0-4 in conference, 2-6 and overall. South Carolina 2-4 and overall, 1-3 and in conference. I, I don't think there's much debate. I mean, if you can make an argument why any of those four, Auburn, SC, MS State, or Vandy, should be any higher than where they're at, I'd love to hear it. Um, but I think you'd have better luck convincing the ocean to not be blue. All right, let's head on in to the final segment and check out the week eight matchups. All right, starting with the noon games, working our way up through the night games, we got five games this weekend. So not a huge slate, but a lot of good ones on the schedule. Mississippi State, Arkansas. No, this is not a ranked matchup. This is 11 a.m. kick on ESPN, 3-3 three and three Mississippi State at 2-5 and five Arkansas. Arkansas, a a six point favorite. Now this was at the time that I made this, that line I think has since moved to six and a half over under 48 and a half. I have no problem picking Arkansas here. I have no problem picking Arkansas. I just don't even know what Mississippi state is. You know, can they score some points? Certainly, but give me the hogs at home in a game. They desperately, 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 need to win all right 230 game cbs the da-na-na, da-na-na. um sorry wrong theme song the cbs game now this is my game of the week number 17 tennessee traveling to number 11 alabama it's the only ranked on ranked matchup we have N- not as compelling as what we had last year with Bryce Young, Hendon Hooker, offensive fireworks, undefeated matchups, top 10. But, ladies and gentlemen, we still have a top 20 matchup between the Tennessee Volunteers and the Alabama Crimson Tide. And as a lifelong, multi-generational Tennessee volunteer fan, this is what it should be every year. Wherever the game is played, whether it's played in Knoxville, in Tuscaloosa, or God forbid, ever at a neutral site, this should be a ranked on ranked SEC powerhouse versus SEC powerhouse every year. And it is so good to see Tennessee bouncing back to make this game matter again because I know that Alabama fans are happier when they beat a good Tennessee team not when they just show up and whoop on on a bad Tennessee team and of course Tennessee shaking that off their shoulder last year and getting that major victory 40 52 49 I ain't gonna let you forget it in Neyland I mean you couldn't ask for it to be better Alabama going to be out for revenge. Tennessee, a nine and a half point underdog. Now, the easiest pick here to me is to take those points. I think no whoever you pick to win or lose, I think Tennessee in those points is definitely the way to go. Um, Everybody has this as a closer game. The over-under is 49. Well, it was 49. I think it's moved down to 48. So action clearly coming in on that side, the under a popular take there from when that money line opened, or sorry, when the over-under opened. So if you kind of take that 49, 48, you know, divide that in half, 24, I think Alabama's really getting three points for a home advantage, and then Vegas kind of sees them as a touchdown or less favorite. So, you know, 24, add three, that's 27. I think they're really kind of seeing it as a 27-21 type ball game, maybe 28-21. And so I would totally see going with Alabama there. Um but I think the real pick, and the reason I have the the over under picked here is to is just to kind of change it up a little bit from just picking the spread. I think Tennessee and the points is the easy one. I'll take Vols to cover the nine and a half. Probably Alabama to win outright 
in another low scoring, mostly defensive game where Tennessee is going to have to establish the run game yet again and try to hit some shots downfield. Don't know how that will work out any better on the road. They've just not been great on the road, as we saw against Florida. Um, and Tuscaloosa is not really a get-right environment, no matter who you are. Um, so I think the play here is Tennessee to cover, probably Alabama to win, and then take the under on the 49 if you got it. Sitting at 48, uh, that's probably pretty close. Like If you're looking at a 27-21, maybe a 24-21, you still take the under. Uh, but I think that's where you go with this game. Uh, though, if there was a gettable road game this year for Tennessee, the way that they're playing defensively, that pass rush is brutal. Jalen Miller has been sacked 26 times. Tennessee can get after him and kind of make him feel that pressure. Maybe you cause some havoc. Maybe you get a turnover. Can you convert that turnover into points, though? That's the ultimate question. So I don't see that happening. It's not the way I'm going to pick it. Um, but I'll have my orange on, and I'll be cheering for the Vols to make that happen on Saturday. All right, next up, the other 230 game, South Carolina at Mizzou. Whew. Coming off of a, a loss at Tennessee, getting a bye week, week losing a, a – Last minute heartbreaker to Florida, then having to go on the road and play number 20 Mizzou, who's sitting at six and one, two and one in the conference. That is not an easy task for South Carolina. Can they score some points? Yes. Mizzou's defense is not as stubborn, I would say, as they were last year. I think they have like a 60th or so ranked defense overall. Uh, so I think South Carolina, Spencer Rattler, that offense can score some points. But ultimately, I'm going to take Mizzou just outright to win and cover the seven-point spread. Maybe it's a late touchdown and a field goal. That over-under is 59. I think it was 60. You know, I'd, I'd probably lean the over. I'm not going to lock the over, but I think I would lean the over. But to me, I would lock the win and the seven. But hey, if South Carolina can go into the other Columbia and get the upset over the Tigers. Maybe that's the momentum swing that they need. Maybe that's the shot in the arm that gets them back to that six and six conversation that gets them to a bowl game. You kind of make something out of nothing here. So uh, wouldn't be surprised for the Gamecocks to come in and play with a chip on their shoulder and to be competitive. Um but I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Mizzou and the Tigers over South Carolina, and hopefully Shane Beamer doesn't kick or punch anything he shouldn't this week. Um, moving on, first evening game, 6 p.m. on ESPN, number 13, Ole Miss at Auburn. This is an over under of 56 and a half. It's moved down now to 55. Ole Miss six and a half point favorite. To me, I'm going to take Ole Miss to win outright and cover six and a half. Now, everybody, I think, is going to look at what Auburn did to Georgia when Georgia rolled in there and they took him down to the fourth quarter. It took a Brock Bowers putting on his Superman cape type play type drive, really, to kind of let Georgia hang on and pull that one out. That was really close to swinging, swinging one Auburn's way. Now, there's something that everybody's been saying since the season started, and I've never really repeated it. It's not really something I've bought into. But a lot of talking heads have said, oh, Hugh Freeze is going to win one. He's not supposed to. That's what he's always done. He's going to win one. He's not supposed to. Which one is it going to be? Is it going to be Georgia? Is it going to be LSU? Is it going to be Ole Miss? Is it going to be Alabama? Well, he hasn't done it yet, and you're kind of running out of time and options for what those games are going to be, right? So I think Georgia might have been that game, and they didn't do it. Uh, it certainly wasn't LSU. They got manhandled by LSU, 48-18. to 18. 
If it's not Ole Miss this weekend, that only leaves really one. And that's Alabama in the Iron Bowl. And even though that game is in Auburn, I don't know that I'm going to take that one to be the one that Auburn gets, that Hugh Freeze gets, that he's not supposed to. Um, so maybe this is the one. Maybe this is Ole Miss. But I, I can't put any money on that. Does Lane Kiffin, is Lane Kiffin capable of losing a game he's not supposed to? 100%. 100%. I don't think it's going to be this one, though. They can just score in so many different ways. Auburn can't, even if they can't stop what little offense Auburn has, that over under is. 56 and a half, 55, whatever it is for a reason. And I think it's because Ole Miss is going to score a ton of points. So give me Ole Miss outright. Lay the point six and a half. Final game of the evening. You've got Army at LSU, 630 p.m. on SEC Network. Um, salute. Thank you, Army. But you don't have a chance in this one. Uh and I'm sorry, I have LSU at number 22 in this graphic. Apologies, apologies, apologies. It's supposed to be number 19 LSU. I'm not sure how that um, how that escaped, but LSU is a 30-point favorite. I think it's moved to 32 now. That over-under has moved to 60 and a half. I think they probably believe that Army is also going to score a little bit. You know, they're kind of in that. I think 18 to 20 points a game range, maybe against LSU, you, you give them a couple touchdowns and a field goal. Um, and I think LSU is going to score a whole lot, you know, 48 to 18. That was against Auburn Add all those points up. It adds to a lot. So give me army to cover because 30 is a lot. Uh, LSU didn't cover 30 against Auburn. I think army can score. I could totally see LSU covering that, though. But if I'm not going to take Army to cover, I'm definitely going to take the over at 57 and a half, which was where it was when I made this. At 60 and a half now, I'm not so sure. But if you got in early on that over-under, um, I think locking that in was the right move. Um, guys, so there it is. Arkansas to win. I think Alabama to win, but Tennessee to cover. Mizzou for the win, Ole Miss to win on the road at Auburn, LSU to win. So where does that put us? I don't think we see much shakeup in the SEC East. Uh, Georgia sitting at number one. Let me just uh, pull this up here. There we go. So Georgia at number one. Don't think we're going to see that change. They're on a bye week. Um, and Florida also on a bye week. So if Tennessee beats Alabama, they're certainly going to jump up. Uh, but if Mizzou also wins, you know, I, I think the SEC East largely stays about where it is. Uh, Kentucky is off, so they're not playing. South Carolina, if they lose, uh, they can't drop any further than Vanderbilt right now. So regardless of the outcome, win or loss, um, Tennessee's not going to move much. Uh, Mizzou's not going to move much, and South Carolina's not going to move much. In the West, uh, LSU and Alabama still have yet to play. So an Alabama loss to Tennessee wouldn't shake things up too much. Um, I don't think LSU is going to win. An Ole Miss loss to Auburn does get interesting, uh, more so for Ole Miss, because that's going to drop them to two and two in conference in line there with the Aggies and puts them uh, three games behind. So, you know, with – because they lost to Alabama, if LSU, uh, you know, 
beats Alabama. Ole Miss is effectively out of it anyways. You still have somewhat of a three-headed monster there, but not really. Arkansas beating Mississippi State doesn't really change things up, but that would let Arkansas jump up probably over Auburn uh, and sit right behind A&M. So not, not a lot, right? Not a lot. So perspective outlook for the rest of the season, look, there's still a lot of football to be played. A lot of things can still happen, but we're starting to see uh, the top of the SEC start to get cemented there with your Georgia, your Alabama, LSU. Who's it going to be in the East? Tennessee and Kentucky still have to play. Tennessee and Mizzou still have to play. Um, Mizzou, Florida still have to play. So there's still a lot to go there. But we're seeing the bottom start to lock into play. South Carolina, Vanderbilt. South Carolina can still claw claw their way back to an extent. Although if they lose to Mizzou, that gets significantly harder. Dare I say impossible. Same for Arkansas this week. If they beat Mississippi State, they could kind of start to claw their way out of that hole, maybe start to work their way to five wins, six. I don't know. Um, Auburn still fighting to get to six. Mississippi State, I just don't think there's a way for them to get to six. So top, bottom, really starting to get locked in. Teams in the middle there, you know, your Kentucky's, Tennessee, Mizzou, A&M's. We'll see what happens. So guys, ladies, people, that is all for today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at SEC Recap. Um, I'm tweeting all the time there. Donate to the pod. Toss me a couple bucks. Go visit my bonfire store, bonfire.com slash store slash SEC Recap. Find you some good merch. That is all for today. Hopefully, I don't have to skip another week, but you never know. Real life just jumps up and bites you sometimes. Regardless, I'm looking forward to the third Saturday in October, and I've got my cigar ready to go regardless. So take it easy. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the action. I will be back with you here hopefully next week on the SEC Recap.